I think these questions are really, really interesting. It's very, very important. Uh, and I want to talk a little bit about uh, my position being a museum director and what the museum has been, can be, and want to be, you know, like... Uh, and let us start with the idea of the modern museum. It's like, uh, it came along uh, in the late uh, 20th century uh, when you had this idea in the, in the 19th century about the, uh, the uh, museum as a national academic institution that was showing up power in one way or another. It's like you had these academies uh, all over Europe and, and the museum was, had a treasure uh, collection. Uh, modernism, as we know, uh, in the late uh, 19th century, uh, started to change the concept of what I very shortly want to call determinism. Uh, I mean, determinism was that, well, you are not going to transgress who you are. You belong to a class, you belong to a gender, you belong to a certain place in the society, and there would be no chance to change that. The good thing with a the, with the modern project, with modernism, was that, and now I, I make a funny, uh, 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 how do you say, uh, but uh, when Oscar Wilde in the late uh, 19th century said that to be a dandy is not about what I have, it is about what I am. So anyone could be, you know, like a dandy, and if you think about this, and when Nietzsche, for example, declared the, the death of God, uh, he said that, okay, it's us instead, the human being, the single individual uh, that is stepping, and we can change our world uh, where we are going. Uh, and Freud, of course, is like was talking about the differences about this identity. This, uh, uh, and we saw this shift then. It's like uh, where the museum in the, uh, let's say, in, in New York, MoMA in the, in the 1920s and 1930s, started to collect and built up a collection from this point of view. It's like, uh, it was not so much about that, uh, oh, I had a uh, military coup in Turkey and now I bring back the <laughs> treasures to the museum or, I mean, it was not showing the community or the culture, the powerful of the nation that it was in the, in, in the uh, 19th century. There was another idea it was another idea of, of, of universalism. It was an idea of uh, to create a new language. Uh, and by creating a new language, uh, you, we could join together in, an, in a global uh, universal uh, community uh, uh, to get rid of the old deterministic, get rid of the old uh, uh, prejudices uh, that were and we should become a new human being, basically. Create a new society with a new policy. And, and, uh, so the modern project was very much about, uh, had this utopian value, and it meant good. I mean, it really meant good that we should break th through, break free from the, from the old past. Uh, but if we now start to think about what happened really, it's like, uh, well, it was about looking for the similarities, not about the differences. Uh, the whole modern project uh, in the beginning of the 20th century was that it's like uh, to find a common good, you know, like uh, that we can share the common good. Uh, hopefully share the same language, share the same opinions, etc., etc. And we saw how this modern project led us to two big systems in the world uh, in the 20th century. We had the capitalistic system and we had the Soviet uh, communist system uh, that both uh, talked about, you know, like the same thing, but from two different angles. It's like, uh, so modernism and the modern project was about, was about exclusion. It was not about inclusion. Everything that didn't fit into this middleman. I still remember traveling to uh, Marseille and to the Le Corbusier's uh, Unité d'Abduction, uh, where he built this huge uh, living 
machine. Uh, and he created all the apartments and everything from the standard human being that is 171. I'm 191, so it's, it's very difficult when I should sit down on a toilet stool and, and you know, like, uh, but I mean, it, it went so far that, okay, here we have the middle, here we have 171 centimeters tall is the standard human being. And of course, us that are not 171, I mean, what should we do, you know, like, uh, I mean, that is, that is a funny uh, uh, comment. The more tragic comment is what we saw during the 1930s when, when minorities of different kinds were persecuted and, and, and followed. And, and, and we had the same in Sweden as we had everywhere uh, in the world, basically. Uh, that let's get away with that things that doesn't fit in, you know, like... Uh, and what we saw... Uh, after the Second World War, when the sort of first modernist democratic museum wonder started to happen, uh, was that museums in New York, Paris, uh, London, well, Stockholm, uh, more or less had the same collection. That should be like a couple of Matisse, a couple of Picassos, a couple of that, a couple of that, a couple of that. That was the standard, you know, like, what is a contempt modern museum? Oh, it should be, have this and this and that in the collection. It was all about, you, how do you say, uh, the sameness. Uh, uh, that was the, the importance to show that I am as good in Stockholm as I, people in New York, you know, like, I, we can collect Picasso here as much as, as in New York, you know, like, it, it's, uh, so the difference was not there. and and. As you understand, I mean, this uh, uh, way of thinking became narrower and narrower. You know, like, uh, where were the other? Uh, when I had art history in uh, the late 1970s, and I had the major book, uh, Constant, by uh, Jonsson, 450 pages, uh, from uh, cave paintings uh, until Andy Warhol, 450 pages one woman artist, Georgia O'Keeffe. Uh, I was 19 years old. Oh, there's no women in art history. I mean, this is the authority says so, you know, like, uh, but uh, it took me at least like uh, five, six, eight years to understand that there were actually like, there were female artists there, you know, like, uh, uh, but this way of controlling the modernist paradigm, the idea of, of using art as a power to to oppress things that doesn't fit in, that doesn't fit in from the white uh, wasp man uh, that has a lot of money or lots of power. It's like that was the aim. If I want to be a little bit critical, that I am. Uh, that at least it became like it ended up like this. It's like, uh, but uh, but the good thing, as I see it. Stars and happened in the 1970s and, and in the 1980s when lots of us were starting to criticize this modern idea that, that, well, I mean, the life, the world doesn't look like that. There are women, there are like black artists, there are Roma artists, there are people from all over. It's like, a, and it's maybe not the sameness that is the most important. It's the difference, you know. What can I learn from other uh, people. Uh, and I remember I was teaching quite a lot in the 80s uh, in art schools and, and the students came and said, oh, I want to go to New York and I want to make a success. It's like, how should I do it? <laughs> well, I didn't know. It's like, but, but, uh, but uh, oh, I, I, can, I can do exactly what they do. They say, no, I'm, I'm, I'm as good as them. You know, like, uh, no, I said, it's like, I, I don't think that this is the right strategy. It's like, if you go there and you do the same as they are doing, you take something from them. You know, they don't want that. It's better that you come there and give them something, you know, that, that they don't have. And I think that that idea of, of instead of, of reducing, you are adding things, you know, like, and it has endless possibilities. There's no end to adding. We, we, we can't get enough. You know, like, uh, I think that this is very important. The idea of transgression, the idea of the avant-garde, if, if you want, is still there. 
in the sense of that we can't get enough. And, 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 and instead of, you know, see the sameness, you see the, uh, the, the difference. But how to use these ideas into a museum, for example? And I've been many, many years, also when I was a critic, and, and uh, especially now when I came here to Malmö, I've been thinking of this almost every day. It's, it's, uh, and I sort of, how can I, as a uh, white middle class person, represent anyone else but me? You know, it's like, uh, I can't. I can be honest and say I can't, but I can create a room where everybody can meet and talk and discuss and, and change uh, opinions and not necessarily need to be agree on everything. I mean, there, there is this horrible, and now I'm being critical against Swedish mentality. Uh, there is this horrible idea that we all should end up in a consensus, uh, you know, like that, that in the end of the day, we should all sit here in this group and we should think the same. Isn't that an awful thought? I mean, it's like, a, but allow, you know, us to think differently, you know, like, and this is, this is the way I think that not only me, but those colleagues of mine that are interested in these questions, we, we, we think and we talk about this a lot. I mean, it's like, when to create an atmosphere in a museum or in a space, it's like, where it's not about me representing me saying this is the best, this is the good. It, it, it's just to try to get people together. Uh, and then something is happening in between these uh, meetings. Uh, and I'm very influenced of, of the uh, thinking of, of uh, let's say, uh, Gilles Deleuze and Félix Guattari, where we are talking about uh, uh, mediators in the society today. It's like that, that we are jumping on different islands all the time. and. And as I remember the first workshop, I, I mentioned Paul Gilroy, my ex-huge hero, <laughs> that where he is talking about truth is not laying in roots, R-O-O-T-S. Truth is within the roots, R-O-U-T-E-S. The travels where we pass, we meet people, and we have a consensus for a while, and, and then it's like, oh, well, I, I was wrong, I did I have new experiences. And this can, you know, like uh, an endless flow of, of, of uh, questions and answers. Uh, and, of course, most of us can't live with that, that we don't have a stable black and white, right or wrong, uh, somebody to hold, hold on. Uh, so in that sense, I think that visual arts and culture still today has a very radical and has a very strong meaning uh, that is, can be, a little bit dangerous to society. And I, and, and I, I hope that more of the institutions, uh, I was, I, I, my 20 minutes is still gone, I see it on you, but it's very long. I'm just listening. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I was on a, on a one-day roundtable discussion uh, two weeks ago uh, about uh, museums and di diversity. And I was a guy from the Swedish church that uh, is the editor of uh, the Swedish church magazine. And he was very critical to the Swedish church. He said, it's like, oh, we have all these churches and cathedrals in this country, but they're totally empty. It's like no one goes there. It's like, uh, and in the message is the place where we should meet. It's like, uh, and why is that? Well, I mean, it's like they're not allowing in any other religion. That's what the church stands for. It's like, so, uh, and and I, we had a beautiful and interesting discussion. It's like that. Where are those hinders? Where are those borders? Where change can't happen? And, uh, and at the same uh, round table, uh, uh, somebody actually from this very radical Swedish uh, organization, Expo, that is, uh, is the watchtower of, of the right extremists in Sweden, he said, it's like, oh, I have a simple solution to you. 
you sack half of your uh, staff and then you bring in, you know, like a diverse... Uh, uh, and I said, no, I can't. It's like, the law says I can. Yes, exactly. The law says it, you know, like... Uh, so uh, all those borders in society, it's not, you know, like... I think this is very important for us to really see where the, 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 the borders are, for example. Uh, and we can only do that by uh, let people meet and discuss and not uh, uh, hope that it will end in a, in, in a con consensus. Uh, because the, I, I'm very afraid that this is uh, the bad side of the modern project, modernist idea that we we do all the same. It doesn't matter where we come from. It's a beautiful thought. It doesn't matter where we come from. We all love each other. But how boring. It's like, I mean, it's like, it's a big narcissism. And, and I could go into psychological uh, discussion about the selfies and the narcissistic society that we're living in and that we self-reflect us. We choose, you know, what we want because we see myself into the other, you know, like, and, and that is, again, the similarity of, of the sameness. Uh, and, uh, but, uh, well, I stopped there. <laughs> Thank you.